The Future of the Synthol Kid, Kirill Tereshin. He's become very famous in the world. Obviously, I'm sure you've heard of this person. He is known for injecting massive amounts of synthol into his arms for many years. Last update was at the end of 2019 where he underwent at least one surgery where they removed three pounds of toxic, dead, diseased muscle tissue uh, out of his arms in the operating room. It was stated that he's scheduled for at least two or three more surgeries, and I don't know what's happened to him since. So, the goal for this video is to bring attention to what's going on here with Kirill and what's going on with Synthol itself and what could have motivated Kirill to do this and of course what may happen to him in the future. He's a young man. Synthol is a site injection oil developed in the mid-1990s by a German bodybuilder named Chris Clark. It has three ingredients. 85% of this substance is an oily, non-allergenic, medium-chain triglyceride oil, MCT oil. MCT oil itself is a dietary supplement, very well known, made from coconut oil, palm oil, kernel oil and other uh, dairy products. It's used across the world safely for weight loss and known to give people dieting endurance and energy while they're exercising. 7.5% of this constituent, synthol, is lidocaine, which is a anesthetic. It's a painkiller. Obviously, you're injecting this into your body it's going to cause pain because it's going to be enlarging in its uh, space occupying process and that's going to be painful. The next piece is 7.5% benzyl alcohol, which is just a disinfectant, just to keep everything sterile. It's amazing that this bodybuilder in the 1990s came up with this because there were other um, site injection oils being used and he thought this combination would be the best and the safest and more readily used. And it is readily used, so this is very easy to buy online. It's not a steroid, it's not illegal at all. Uh, tons of online advice for administration in the bro science land, and you guys know that. Please give comments. Let's try to get mostly positive comments. If you have a negative comment, try to phrase it appropriately so it doesn't hurt someone's feelings. Um, let's get discussion, discussion going. Let's talk about synthol use all over the world. Um, bodybuilders absolutely use this. Top pros in the world, probably near 100% of them use it, and I'll explain how. And I'm not disparaging these guys. I take care of some of these guys, and they've told me exactly how it's used. Amateurs use it too. They use this minimally, minimally compared to um, someone like Kirill, who's used massive leaders, leaders of it. They'll use much smaller doses, fine-tuning to bring up and balance lagging body parts. And this would be for the biceps, triceps, delts, and calves, and it's utilized just to bring them up, just to balance. And it's, it's theoretically not seen, right? So the judges really can't tell. That's the theory behind it. Incredible process. Incredible process for this. The professional bodybuilders don't rely on this itself to get big like they are and to build those incredible bodies, but they do use it. Now, on the amateur level, I think it's been seen and noted that there are people that have used disproportional amounts of it. You know, a guy on stage and his deltoids are just so massive and just so disproportional, not even symmetric. And then there's that video that we all seen where the guy's flexing and it spits out. You know, it leaks and squirts out all over the stage. 
Um, it's just, it's embarrassing and it's part of what's going on in the world and I need to present that. Complications of synthol, I've seen some of these and I think the good news on this from my report is that I take care of, of course, some professionals, but mainly common men all over the world. And uh, this is, people don't really use, guys don't really don't use synthol. It's just something that people don't really use, fortunately. There's some use of it, of course, down there in the southern part of South America. There are regions where it looks like it's used more cosmetically. But think regular guys here in America and uh, overseas and abroad just want to get big and strong. They're not really using this, and that's great. So, side effects of synthol. Locally, pain, obviously, despite having the lidocaine in there, redness and swelling. Infections, number one, local infections. You can inject anything, not to mention TRT, and you can get, you can get a cellulitis or a local skin infection. It can get worse and go septic. Abscesses, now this is what's going on. Kirill's arms, that is a sterile abscess process in which the body uh, encapsulates it. So he's not sick and dead from it, although I, he's probably been sick and he's had probably been treated for cellulitis and infections, I'm assuming. But the body um, encapsulates this and it goes into a cystic scar tissue process and hardened like wood hard. Like, like really calcified heart. And that's what they're removing. They're removing his muscle that's all part of this. You can't just take out the synthol. It will be in there and permanent for years, I've learned. Incredible. Hardened. So that's what's happened to him. That's a sterile abscess. Now, systemic complications of synthol use. Sepsis, you inject it, it can get infected, and the infection circulates around your body, that's sepsis. Certainly see that for any type of person that can get a local or into a systemic infection. Pulmonary embolism, a DVT, classically that we see a clot in the veins, can get up into the lungs, block the pulmonary arteries, and end up leading to shortness of breath, um, people to be really scared and suffering and certainly can lead to death. P.E. This is very rare. This is rare stuff. But again, it's in the literature. I have to bring it to you. And lastly, systemically, there's vasculitides and there's autoimmune processes that the body is triggered to open up its immune system and to react across the body widely and cause autoimmune condition diseases. Again, rare, but all part of the presentation. And there are psychological complications that I have to bring up, obviously in this case with Kirill, that after it's used and you have some disfigurement and there, there may be embarrassment for using it. The bodybuilders that are on stage that people will mock and say, that's crazy, look how, how horrible you looked. And it's maybe the guy that had the the, 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 the spitting out and the leaking of the synthol, oil, synthol it's going to suffer complications and afterwards of embarrassment. And uh, this is a terrible, tragic thing. So psychological. Now, what motivated Kirill to do this? I don't know. No one knows. And this is not about disparaging and putting him down by any means. I want to be very careful. No, let's go into the psychiatric aspect of what could have happened to him and other men. Other men that are using this, not to mention other men that are using anabolic steroids. There's a condition called body dysmorphia disorder. It's a subset of obsessive compulsive disorder. I'm not a psychiatrist, so we're not going to get to some of the details if this is relevant or not, and is it exaggerated, but what happens is Someone perceives a body part to be um, not up to par or troubling or flawed, and they obsess. They have intrusive thoughts, ruminating thoughts that they can't get rid of, and they suffer. They're suffering. So what happens is they will go to extreme, extreme means to remedy this and fix this. Synthol. So Krill, 
obviously looks like a thin man genetically, and he didn't like his arms. He probably started to lift weights, and then he had access to synthol. He did a little bit. He felt it. He said, wow, it's working. And then you get this feedback system where you probably get some dopaminergic high, and then it's not enough, and you move and move, and then he gets to the point where he is. Now, this is obviously related also to another obsessive compulsive condition known as bagorexia or muscle dysmorphia which is can happen to men that are utilizing steroids and want to get bigger and bigger and bigger not with synthol but just steroids and they can uh, be hurting themselves you can see that you can't tease these out these are going to be you know one used upon and this is the same subset of men Unfortunately, both of these conditions and any condition, obsessive compulsive disorder, psychiatric condition, is intimately related to depression, suicidal thoughts, and even suicide attempts and suicides. It's very sad. So what's the future for Kirill? I don't know. He had at least one surgery and I assume he's going for other surgeries. It appears like they took uh, all the muscles out of his biceps and triceps on one side, and he even showed a photograph of that after the surgery, he's never going to come back. That muscle's never going to come back. He, the muscles are removed, a significant amount of the muscles removed. He has to have the other side done, I assume. So we just don't know. Um, he has to live now with that scar tissue and the embarrassment of this. He has to accept that what he's done is in the past. He has to move forward. And I think which would be beautiful for him would be to, yeah, I was a synthol kid. I did this. I took, the, took it to the extent of what it is. And there are so many people in the world that are going to follow him to greater or lesser extents. And he could help heal men and prevent men, not to mention women with anorexia and eating disorders, he can help prevent this from happening because he lived it. If he survives this, right, with the surgeries and the depression and uh, God knows what's going on in, in this man's uh, life and mind. So that would be great. That would be an awesome outcome. Like so many people that have suffered and they end up getting through maybe like drugs and alcohol, even near suicide attempts, and they come out to be mentors, and they, they end up helping and heal people. That would be so wonderful. So please, thank you so much for this. I really hope it helps. Let's have a great dialogue about body dysmorphia, muscle dysmorphia, synthol, other types of site injection oils that you've used, and anything related to this, even depression and anxiety and any suffering that there is. Please share this video all around the world, especially with young men that we're trying to bring attention to education of what can happen as they're trying to better themselves. They can go too far and use any of these agents from steroids, right, SARMs, and even these kind of agents that they inject in their body. And it starts off very light and it starts off something appears to be safe. And then they get to a point where um, it gets more and more dangerous. So thank you so much.